to talk about on this video fuzzy lookups. Uh, what are they? Well, um, on another video that I've um, already got posted, um, it will discuss in quite a lot of detail how the lookup transformation works. Now, sometimes a lookup isn't good enough. Um, the reason being is it's down to humans really. Um, I'm not the best speller in the world and what tends to happen is someone will type in something wrong, it goes through, but then the computer if you're doing a lookup to find an ID etc, um, it doesn't know the difference between a spelling mistake and a normal one. This is really what fuzzy lookups all about. It's a way of identifying via pattern matching a particular word or series of words and then making a best guess as to what they should be. Um, so an example that I've got actually at the moment at work is that we have um, an employees list for a timesheet application um, but we don't have the employee IDs. So what I've opted to do is use a fuzzy lookup to look at our our ERP solution which has the employee and the employee IDs to then really look at the first name and last name and then give a determination as to what the correct ID should be. Now we're not going to go into something as in-depth as that on these examples. What we are going to do however is we're going to look at it from a perspective of I have an Excel spreadsheet and I need to um, work out the department and if it's spelt correctly. Um, so for this what you may need to do is download the example files that I've got. Um, you can obtain these from the website being displayed on screen at the moment and go to the available post. Um, at which point what you would need to do is unzip the contents of that file onto your C drive. Very important it's on your C drive. Um, and you should then have a PC Teach Me folder. Um, inside there, there's a series of different folders, such as the database that we're going to use, the external data, which is our Excel file, um, an install script just to save you attaching the database, um, and then the project itself we're going to look at, and then finally, any SQL scripts we're going to run through the management studio. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and go into the install folder and double click onto the install.bat, and all being well, it should actually create and attach the database for you which is going to be called PC Teach Me underscore fuzzy lookup example and once that's done we'll leave the window open but we can now just jump into management studio and we should now see if we refresh the screen we should now see we have that database so within here a series of tables and the ones specifically we're going to be focusing on this is going to be the employees the error employees and that's about it really. Um, so what do we do? Well if you go into bids what I'd like you to do is do file open project or solution and go and find the fuzzy lookup example which is located in let's just jump out just so we can see properly so from the PC teach me folder we go into projects SSIS lookup example and then um, fuzzy lookup example and fuzzy lookup example again and then you should see the solution and then just open it up so it's fuzzy lookup um, that we need so once you've opened it up you should only see that there's one package available so double click onto that the fuzzy lookup DTSX and we've got on the first page on the workflow it just basically has an SQL task which will truncate the tables in question that we're going to be looking at and then goes straight into the import so if we go into the data flow um, area. Now, when you look at this, you may think, oh my god, it's like Spaghetti Junction, i.e. too much going on on the screen. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to neglect to talk about a particular section of it, which is really um, from the Union Region ID upwards. The reason being is that's covered on the other video that I've posted about lookups. So I suggest if you're not familiar with them, please go and look at that video first before continuing on on this one. Right, so what are we going to do? Well, we've got our employees in a particular state, so let's just have a refresh our minds as to what the data looks like. So this is just a preview of the Excel spreadsheet, and specifically we're looking at this department um, column. And as you can see, I've got accounts on here but spelt badly. Um, if I scroll down, marketing spelt correctly, um, but then I've got marketing spelt wrong. And then a bit further down, I've got sales as a problem, and it should be sales. Um, and there's all sorts of different spelling mistakes. So the objective of this video is to identify um, accounts should be actually spelt 
correctly. So do a fuzzy look up on that and do pattern um, recognition. Same for marketing and the same for sales, etc. etc. So let's just close that and cancel again. Right, so next thing then really is let's have a look at the fuzzy lookup itself. So um, underneath this union here I've got the fuzzy lookup departments. Now this was just simply over on the left hand side the fuzzy lookup um, transformation. Notice there is a fuzzy grouping. That's another video that we'll go into. Right, so let's have a look at the fuzzy lookup. So all I've done is I've dragged and dropped from the union um, transformation onto the fuzzy lookup transformation. So let's just double click on that to see what's going on. Um, so I'm telling it to look at a particular table, in this case the lookup departments list. So let's just jump into the management studio, sorry for chopping and changing a bit here, and just have a look at the lookup department list. So let's just um, select the top thousand rows. And as you can see, all I've got is four records in here. If you want, please feel free to add some more. Adjust the Excel spreadsheet as well if you wanted to, to, to fiddle around with the results. Um, but they're the four key things that we're going to be looking at on this video. So let's go back into the um, project. Um, so I'm telling it to look at that lookup department list, but what am I going to do with it? Well, that's where the column section comes into. However, we just need to mention what's going on down here. We have a store new index or use an existing index. Well, if I say use an existing index, um, what I'm telling it to do is look at the indexes which I've defined on the actual um, table itself. Um, I haven't got any, so I'm going to ignore that. Um, and what else have I got? I can generate a new index so I can store the the new index and call it um, fuzzy lookup match index and so forth. The reason for that is then what it'll do is it'll run a series of stored procedures and it will actually implement an index onto that table. It's just a shortcut as to um, the database design itself. You could have done it yourself manually and then just chosen the existing index which is um, within there um, or you can actually um, tell it within here. If you tick the maintain store index then it runs um, additional stored procedures to make sure it's up to date and main, um, maintenanced basically. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to leave it just on the reference table. Let's click onto the columns tab and very similar to the lookup I have a pass through column which just says I want those fields to go through no problem I just want them to go straight through this regardless of whether it finds a fuzzy lookup entry or not and I've dragged and dropped the department onto the department field and so what I'm telling it to do is look at the department field notice the one in lowercase not uppercase so I'm telling it it's this field here but I want to call it fuzzy department so Fine, great. What's the advanced tab do? Well, this is where the magic happens. You've got the similarity threshold. Um, what this means is the lower it is, the more likely it is to find a match. However, those matches may not be what you're actually specifically after. Remember, a computer is stupid. It only does what you tell it. So what you can do is you can say, well, actually, I want to be 50% sure of it. Now, what will happen at that point is if it finds anything which it's 40% sure of, it will not actually register it and then say, I cannot find a record. So if you wanted to find more matches, it's better to leave this slider on zero. If you want to find accurate matches, you'll see that you can move it over uh, to 99%. Notice you can't do 100 because if you're doing 100 you might as well use the lookup transformation yeah so we're going to leave it on the most lax of the lot which is 0% meaning just bring everything across with your confidence level and your similarity of what you believe it is to be um, and so if we just okay that what I'm telling it to do underneath that is then to do a conditional split because it's done its work and it's decided on what the results are going to be um, in regards to its um, checking but the important thing now is to say well just because it's found a match it doesn't necessarily mean it's the match you want so what we do in the conditional split is we actually do a simple statement just to say okay I'm going to cause an output called found but the confidence level must be 80% or higher I'm not happy if the computer finds anything under 80%, so therefore I've put in a not found option. So then what happens is if it's found, it just goes straight down to the bottom and inserts the records. Alternatively, what I tell it to do is if it hasn't found a, a value, to replace the answer um, which it's um, put in, which would be null, um, to put in unknown instead. So let's just um, cancel that and run the whole thing and let's just see what happens. So we execute the package. 
and it should whiz all the way through. So let's have a look at this particular area. So it went through, it started off with, um, let's just make this a little smaller for us. Um, it went through 39 rows and after the fuzzy look finished, it still had 39 rows. Um, but now what I tell it to do is say, okay, well, based on that condition that I put in of 80%, it found 14 rows that weren't at that confidence level, whereas 25 were. And those 14 rows were replaced with unknown. And then finally, it dropped down to the bottom and, ins and still inserted the 39 rows. So just complete the package at the bottom. Let's go and have a look at the table and see what it's come back with. So we just um, open... Um, or select the rows from the employees table. Let's just whiz this up. Um, so, so far so good, but you'll see that we now have a similarity section here. Now, what we've got is the first lot, it's saying one, 100%, because it was typed in accurately. So the um, Excel department was sales, and what we are replacing it with is still sales, same with IT, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as we go down, you'll start to see that these percentages come in. So at this point, we've got a similarity of 83% of a particular word in its dictionary, so to speak. However, its confidence was very low. Now, why is that? Because the word is so small, it's it's only, what, five, six characters long sales, um, whereas IT is only two characters long. So um, the less amount of characters, the less pattern matching it can do. So therefore, its confidence would be less. Now, we know, if we look at this one, we are absolutely sure that the Excel department here should be marketing and therefore it found a similarity but the confidence level was at 56%. So what you may want to do in this scenario is to go back into your package, so let's do this, let's go and change the conditional split ratio. So now let's say that I'm interested in anything which is 50% and anything less than 50%. So OK that, let's execute the fuzzy lookup again. So it should whiz through. Now what you can see it's only brought back seven rows instead of the 14. So let's just exit that and let's just see what the results look like now. So we'll just re-execute um, this query, making sure I'm on the right database. Right, so let's have a look now. So here we go. So Excel says marketing, but it's found in the lookup list marketing. So that is the, the column that we should be displaying on the screen. And as you can see, we whiz down, it's found sales, and it's worked all of that out for us. Um, so fantastic, it has done it. However, it has found a problem on some of the other ones, such as the sales one here. It, it couldn't work it out, or sales there. So in those scenarios, you're probably better off doing doing some other kind of transformation. If it's a common spelling mistake, you may want it to say on no rows found to do a little bit of um, a derived column to work out or a calculated column to work out if it is spelt this way, replace it with the word sales, etc. So there you have it. That's what the fuzzy lookup does. So if you then start having more on the screen, you'll probably want to follow up with this conditional split. That's the very important thing. Now, you may not want to use confidence. By all means, use the um, similarity one instead. Now, for the benefits of the training video, I've included the similarity and the sim similarity department. Um, but in reality, you wouldn't put those into your table because at the end of the day, that may be the end result that you're wanting to display to the end users. So if they um, are looking at this inside a report or inside um, Excel by connecting to the database, you don't want them to see these um, special codes. So you're better off masking them, hiding them from it. So in the union statement, what you may want to do at this point is just say, now get rid of them, I don't want to see them. And for yourself and your own benefits, another video that I've got on the series that you may want to have a look at is actually putting in a data viewer instead. So so what I will do here is if I just double click at this point, data viewer, add, and OK on the grid, and OK again. If I run it now, what will happen is I will see those similarity thresholds inside a viewer whilst it's still running. So then I can actually make the determinations inside the package as opposed to inside the table. And that's the way I would recommend you do it in the future. Um, so for the benefits of the video, those columns are present, but in reality, you won't use them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd like you to play around with it, add extra things in here, and just play around with the similarity threshold and I do think you'll find this very very useful so thanks for watching